Over the past couple weeks, I've been sharing all of the tools that we can use inside of On One to modify color. However, I completely forgot to start with the foundation tool, which is tone and color inside of On One Photo Raw. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's jump into On One and take a look. All right, so here we are inside of On One Photo Raw with the image. And so far, all I've done is I've added in the tonal adjustments, which is really just working with the light. So if I pull down on the saturation here, you can see I have a relatively contrasted looking image and that's what I want. And that's all that I really did here is I got the exposure looking the way that I want it to look. And then I took out the saturation, did all that. So this is what the image looks like coming straight out of camera. And this is what the image looks like so far. Now I've also got some local adjustments on this photo. So I'll just go ahead and turn those on. And you don't necessarily need the local adjustments. It's not a big uh, deal. However, I wanted to darken down the corner and brighten up her eyes. So now that I've worked with all of the lighting adjustments that I really cared to work with, it's time to work with the foundation of color. And you'll notice I don't have any real plugin or plugins, any effects on this image right now. I have a black and white filter, but that was really just to help me uh, as I was working through the tone and color, I'm sorry, the tonal adjustments. So I turn that off, don't need it. We'll come back to develop, and then we're gonna come to the color section. And the color section is broken down into two areas. The first one is white balance, and then the second is saturation and vibrance. Now. You could work with these in whichever order makes the most sense to you. I would recommend using the white balance section first and then transitioning to saturation and vibrance. Now, the reason for that is you wanna tell on one what is supposed to be white or a neutral tone and then start to modify your saturation and vibrance around that. If you do it backwards, it could still work. It's just up to you. But for me, I like to tell on one, this is what the white balance should be, and then modify it. So there's a few ways that we can modify it. I'm gonna go over the manual method first because I think that this is the way that everyone should learn to use the white balance tool. So the first thing is going to be the temperature. If you pull it to the left, it's going to add blue into the image. And it's essentially just shifting the neutral tones in the image more towards the blue side. Uh, and then if you pull it to the right, it's gonna shift all your neutral tones more to a yellow, which is called warming it up. So if you pull it to the left, it's cooling it down. And if you pull it to the right, it's going to warm up the image. And what I see a lot of people do is they over warm their images. Now you can use the white balance tool for creative looks. So that's a subjective statement. However, I think when you start looking at something like this, you could probably say that looks pretty decent but it may be a little too warm. I would say that it is. We'll go ahead and pull this down or double click it to reset the value. And what I typically do is I look at what's in the image, what the tone of the image is. And this looks like it was shot either early morning or as the sun was getting ready to set. And so I would go probably a little bit warmer and I'm not worried about the number. I'm worried about what the image looks like. And so around 59, 25 ish looks pretty good to me. Again, you can set yours to wherever you would set it. And then you have this tint slider. And the way that this tool works is if the image looks a little too green, like it does right there, well, you just pull until, pull it to the right, adding magenta, which is the opposite of green, and it will remove that green cast. And then of course the opposite is true. If you have too much magenta, the closer you move it to green, the less you have that magenta cast. So my recommendation, don't go more than 20 points in either direction, because once you get into the 20 uh, point range or beyond 20, so I'm at negative 24, you can really see that green color cast. And 
you know, if you're trying to do a really quick color grade and green is fitting the aesthetic, then by all means, go for it. But my recommendation, keep it more natural because there's better tools to get a more creative look like the color grading tool if you want to make things a little bit green or split toning. So I would recommend keeping your white balance as neutral as possible uh, because remember, you're in the develop section and the whole point of the develop section is to set the canvas foundation so you can do all of the creative adjustments later. So once you have your white balance set, then you're ready to move into the saturation and vibrance. Now, before we go there, I will say, if you want to use a more automated method of establishing your white balance, there are two ways. You can click this little drop down where it says white balance, and you can hover over each of these presets. And these are in, built into most cameras. So if you are familiar with setting the white balance on your camera, then you can, these should be mostly familiar to you. But if not, and you shoot in raw, again, I have to stress that you have to shoot in raw in order to get this uh, capability. But if you do shoot in raw, then you can change your white balance after you've taken the photo. And so these, these are the things that you would find in your camera typically. And cloudy doesn't look bad for this particular image. But the other way that you can work with it is, or set your white balance in a more automated way, is using this eye picker tool. And the way that this eye picker tool works is when you click it, it gives you a little crosshair. You can come over to your image and you'll click on something that should be white in the image. And so if this dress is supposed to be white, I can just click on it. And now I've told on one, that dress is white. And so make everything else in relationship to it uh, more saturated or less saturated based off of me telling you that this is white. Now, the problem with this particular tool is sometimes it's not always giving the, the desired look because it's you may select something that you that isn't truly white or isn't truly neutral. Um, and then you'll notice I lost some of that color variation that was happening in the background. It just made everything golden. So the reason why it's important to know how to use the manual option for creating your white balance is I know that it's too warm. So I'm just going to pull that down and notice how I'm starting to recover some of that color information that's happening back here. And that's really the, the big so what to using the white balance tool. And then, of course, I think my tint looks a little too green. I want this to be a more warm photo. So I'm just going to pull that magenta over to the right. And now I'm back to where I was. And I think that this is about balanced. All right. It's pretty close to that 5900 mark that I had earlier. Now, the next section is saturation and vibrance. The way that I recommend using this tool is first setting your saturation level by pulling it all the way down, getting this black and white image, and then starting to pull up on the saturation and just looking at the overall image until you can start to see color in pretty much every point, right? This is still a little too desaturated this could be the look you're going for, though. But for me, I think somewhere around here looks about right. And don't worry about these numbers. These numbers are really just for reference. What matters most is what your image looks like. All right. So when I pull up on the slider, I'm not looking at these numbers. I'm looking at literally what does the image look like, even when I'm working with the tint slider with the white balance. And then we'll look at vibrance. And the way that I use vibrance is I usually just pull up on it until I feel like the image starts to pop probably somewhere around here. And, you know, yeah, vibrance, I go a little aggressive. This is just my own personal taste, right? And so what this has done for me is it's 
saturated the image and then it's taken those less saturated colors and given them a little bit more life and presence in the photo and that's what vibrance does it gives presence to the colors in the image now you'll notice on this image i have this button down here reduce vibrance on skin checked and so on one it has the idea that skin tone should be in a certain color range, which is probably right. And you gotta be careful with this tool because you'll notice that uh, when I turn this tool off and on, you'll see what's happening to the wheat stock in the background here. So if I turn that off, you'll see that the vibrant slider has really increased around uh, the stock or the background here, and it doesn't look ideal. And so turning it off, it just makes the photo look a little bit more cohesive because it's reducing the impact of what vibrance would do on those particular tones, which are usually shared with the tones in the skin. Now, I won't tell you what's right or wrong. You just got to try it on your own photos. But for this image, I find that checking the reduced vibrance on skin gives me the better look overall. Now, we have our white balance, we have our saturation, and we have our vibrance set, as well as our tones, we have those set for this particular image. And this is when I would move into the effects module and start to use the other color tools to stylize this image. So if I want reds to pop a little bit more, I may go into a channel mixer and increase the reds or maybe I'll go into local adjustments and just use a brush with a higher saturation and paint that in. There's so many ways to start stylizing the image, but I need the foundation first. And that's the whole point of using the color section inside of the develop module. Now, again, you could just be done with the image here as well. So if I look at the before and the after, I think that this image is pretty much done. It's ready to go. But if I wanted to stylize it and go a little bit further, then that's where I would start to use the other color tools and effects uh, inside of the effects module. If you found value in today's video, smash the like button. If you have questions, then leave it in the comment section below. But I'd also love to hear what your thoughts are on using the color section inside of the develop module is that something that you find intuitive is it something that you find helpful or do you just completely skip develop altogether and edit only using effects when you work inside of on one if you like to save some money when you shop over at the on one store consider using the affiliate link and coupon code found in the description box below I do make a commission from everyone who uses either the link or the coupon code, but it's at no extra charge to you. It's a great way of supporting the channel. If you'd like to sign up for a training call and get your questions answered specifically about On One Photo Raw, you can do so using the link in the description box below. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.